This will be how our program creates people, uh, associates that data into those people objects, and then we can then act on the people. Hey Coder, Stefan here from Be a Python Dev. This is the third video in my Learn Python Quickly tutorial series. And in this, I'll be introducing some of the concepts of what objects are in a program, as well as kind of that iterative development process of starting with some basic functionality and improving and adding on to it as our requirements start to grow. For the first iteration of our address book here, um, I already created the new file and added our header into it, which will be descriptive once it's in the repo. Uh, we're going to give the user the ability to add a person. Um, we're going to put that person into a person class, and then we're going to print out their phone number. Let's go ahead and code that up real quick. First, we'll print out uh, welcome to the address book so that the user knows kind of what the application is supposed to do. After printing out the welcome to the address book program, uh, let's also say enter your contacts information. Go ahead and add an apostrophe here since this is a uh, correct English. First name. Add some nice spacing here. Uh, first name equals input. And then we'll do this for the other contact pieces. Uh, we're not actually doing anything fancy with H here, so we can just let this be a string. And then lastly, we want their phone number. And I just realized this doesn't make much sense. Um, there's gonna be a blank line and the user's not gonna know what to do. So we'll do age, make this more, <laughs> make more sense for the user. All right, and then we wanna give a feedback mechanism and to kind of let them confirm that the program's done something. Thank you, we have received your contacts information. This is our crawl phase of the program, uh, and then eventually we'll hit run and then walk and kind of just crawl, run, no, nope, crawl, walk, run, sorry. <laughs> All right, this is the crawl phase of our program where we just provide the most minimalistic functionality to have it do something. And this is just storing the contacts information into variables. And then we will put that into a person object. So let's see that this works so far and kind of go through that iterative development cycle. So first name equals John Doe, John Doe's 24, and his phone number is 555, just 555. Thank you, we have received your contacts information. Now let's actually put this into a person class so that we can structure this a little better. Again, that's the point of classes is to be able to structure your code in logical ways, um, to organize your data in a way that makes sense and to also associate functionality to that person or to that class's model uh, that also makes sense so that your class has a single responsibility of what it's trying to keep track of. Uh, that'll make more sense when we show what our class is. And a lot of times in coding, you wanna put your class definitions in another file, a person class.py, uh, what else makes sense for a person? What what would a person have? Uh, you could also have like a house class.py, but for the sake of address book, we only need the person model. And it only has a couple properties associated with it and a single method. We can do that inline and we'll do it at the top of our class here. To create this class in Python, all we need to do is uh, type the keyword class and then the name of our class. So this is just gonna be person. You can also have your class inherit from other classes to extend functionality onto other things. Again, that's a little more intermediate concepts, but for the sake of our person class, we're not gonna have it inherit from anything and we're just gonna do class. And then we need to create a constructor for our class, which will be a way for us to create new person objects. Uh, to do that, we just define uh, the init value 
And then the init expects the parameters uh, self, which is the reference to the class. And it also will expect a first name, last name, an age, and a phone number. This will be how our program creates people, uh, associates that data into those people objects, and then we can then act on the people. Uh, so we need to store these into uh, class variables, which will be specific to the class that's being made. So we'll just go ahead and add these onto the self object. All right, now we have a way to create people and store data to a person. Now let's also print out a full name method. Uh, so this will be how we act on the data that's being stored within the class and kind of present it to the users in different ways or be able to manipulate that data by adding on to ages or changing phone numbers when a user gets a new phone number. For right now, all we need to do is be able to present the person's full name. We'll present just the full name by creating a full name function and creating that def full name and every class method will expect the self reference to it. Uh, you don't need self if there's static methods, which uh, again, static methods is a little more intermediate and we're not gonna cover it in this, but just know that that exists. So we'll print self.first plus self.last. Uh, we can also use the f strings here to make this a single line. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. It's a little cleaner, but just to show you that you can concatenate strings that way. All right, and there we have it. Now we have our person class. Uh, we can construct it with different data and then we can print the full name. And that process of taking data from input or taking data from a file or a memory stream into an object is known as deserialization. So we're basically deserializing our input into the person object. And then we can later serialize that data into a file should we need to persist it, which we most likely will be doing further along in this tutorial. All right, now that we have a way to represent people, instead of just printing that we've received the contact information, let's deserialize that data into a person object and let's call the full name method to present to the user and to kind of learn how to use class methods and create classes. We'll do that by creating our contact and our contact is a person with the first name, first name, uh, Basically, we're just using our values from the input fields in lines 22 and 25 to store into this class. So age, and then the phone number. And then we'll call the full name method on the rContact instance, which an instance is just a class that has been initialized, stored into memory, and can be used throughout the program. Let's go ahead and run this and demonstrate that we are deserializing our data into this R contact instance. And then we're printing that person's full name by using the uh, R contact full name method to print that out into our terminal. So first name, John Doe 22, age, five, phone number 555. Thank you, we have received your contacts information. And then uh, we print out John Doe. So that's a nice way to organize data and then print that data out again. Let's say we want an external representation of what this contact looks like. So we don't always need to call like a full name method or something. In Python, we can use magic methods to alter um, the internal workings of a class. That can be done by creating like a double underscore method. In Python, that's called a dunder method. Uh, when we type in double underscore here in our Visual Studio code, you can see a list of typical dunder methods that can be overridden on a class. Uh, what we want is this string magic method. When we go ahead and click that, it will just create us the, the default 
value of this. Uh, we don't actually want to return super string because the super is something from inheritance, which again is a little confusing for what we're trying to do. What we want to do for this is we want to create a string that represents what our person is. And then we go ahead and return that. Then we can just print our contact and it will automatically call this string method for us. Uh, let's go ahead and add some formatting here. Uh, there's different ways to create multi-line strings in Python. Uh, for now, we're just going to create a string and add stuff onto it. Uh, you can also use like triple quotes and different multi-line methods. And then we'll actually copy and paste this format and then we'll change what variables we're putting into it. So this is a way to be a little more productive and utilize our IDE. And then we'll go ahead and copy this. But we need to make sure we're not overriding the string and we want to concatenate that line onto it. Uh, and then we will return our return string here. And this will be the way that we convert people objects into strings that can then be printed out. Instead of calling the our contact full name method, let's go ahead and just print out our contact here. And we can see that that dunder magic method is working correctly. All right, first name, John Doe 22. Phone number 555. And now we can see that our contact is being printed out completely just using the print method. And this is not very readable. So let's go ahead and change this formatting a little bit. So we'll go back up into our person object in the string magic method and modify how we're displaying this. So this will just be self.last here. We'll also get rid of the other formatting and we'll just go ahead and return this directly. So this cleans up our code a little bit and makes our uh, output a little tighter, make a little more sense. So return this, get rid of this. It's important in coding to make sure that your code is readable. And that's kind of what we're doing by doing this cleanup. And it also makes our output cleaner as well too. So let's see what this looks like now. All right, so thank you. We've received your contact's information, John Doe, 23, and then his phone number. All right, so now in our program, we have a way to store a single contact and then print out that contact. For the sake of an address book, that doesn't really make that much sense. Ideally, we want to be able to store multiple contacts, um, display all of our contacts, and also get the contact information for a specific person. Uh, to be able to do that, we're going to need to extend the functionality of our code. Uh, the first thing we'll need to do is a way to store multiple contacts. We can store multiple contacts using a list data structure. Uh, you can think of a list as a piece of memory, and then another piece of memory, and then another piece of memory, where each one of these is a contact. And then we can print out all of the contacts in a list for our, uh, all of our available contacts. <laughs> so let's go ahead and modify our program to store multiple contacts and store them in that list data object. Hey coders, thank you for watching part one of this tutorial. I hope you follow along and watch part two where we will actually be making that change to add in the list for tracking the people objects 
And we'll also be modifying the application to take in various levels of input to interact with our data in certain ways. And in part three of this program, we'll be reading and writing our data into a file on the disk and then loading that in and serializing it into the people objects. So stick around for that. Uh, thank you again. Bye.